Hello viewer and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to do a full dungeon run of Aspire of the Watcher. And this is probably the best dungeon to do as a beginner. Like the mechanic is very simple. There's nothing to be afraid of. Like it's basically the same mechanic for the whole the whole run besides one tiny variation. Yeah, I'm probably like 9 months too late for this guy, but here we go. The weapons you probably want to start with in this encounter is going to be like any decent sniper rifle and maybe like a linear fusion rifle and an ad clear weapon of your choice. It really is not, not that big of a deal. And if you are attempting to solo this one, uh, just make sure you set your fire team to close. It's easily soloed, this dungeon. It's nowhere near as difficult as something like Warlord's Ruin but probably a bit harder than something like Pit of Heresy, for example. I think you'll find the mechanics are like quite simple and easy to understand, very easy to pick up quite quickly. So that's 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 quite good for, for beginners especially. Coming into this, we're going to start by killing this guy, because he deserves it. And you want to basically take out these Cyclopses. If you're with multiple people, it's not as big a deal, but if you're solo, you definitely want to spend the time to kill these Cyclopses. There's four of them that spawn, one on each corner of the map. You gotta be careful because if they're not activated, they'll be immune. And, like you just saw that shot I just took, and he did no damage. There we go. Succession is great for this, it'll one shot them from a headshot. And it, and any good, like when you're using some kind of ad clue weapon, you know, something with uh, have volatile rounds or incandescent. You'll see when I kill this Minotaur, he'll drop a pool of light. And if you walk in that light, you pick up a buff that lasts for 30 seconds called Arctrician. While you have the buff, you can shoot these nodes. It's very important to start with the ones with the down arrows. I'll show you where those are in a second. And you're following the cable round to shoot the next node in the line. Like those science projects you did where you made the electrical circuit to make the light bulb turn on. I mean, to me, it's kind of exactly like that. So it's not that difficult. You just got to follow them step by step. When you reach the last cable, see me shoot the wrong one. It actually doesn't affect anything. It's a very forgiving mechanic. Like, even if you shoot the wrong one, it won't kill you, it won't wipe you, so it doesn't matter. And then when it, you do shoot the last one, it will lock that node in, and then you proceed to the next one. There's four nodes total, I'm going to show you where the other locations are in the background. Show you the starting points of the other locations, to make it easier for you to find them when you have a hundred enemies shooting at you. So every single circuit completion, you'll see that a wave of enemies will spawn. It's definitely worth taking them out, otherwise you can really find yourself in a lot of trouble. Um, also check for those Cyclopses, because a couple of them will spawn as well every single time you complete one of the circuits. In the background you should see me completing them as we go. I do try and kill some of the ads, especially when solo. If you're with your friends, it's not so bad, you can run. You can have two people running and one person on ad clear, and you should be fine. But if you are solo, definitely take the time to kill the ads between running. It will save you a lot of time and a lot of headache. Especially watch out for the ones that explode. Those guys move at like 100 miles per hour just to suicide your ass. So you are already got to make sure you watch out for them. Here you'll see me successfully Nova Bomb two of them. Just because they were annoying me. I mean, you know, it was worth it. Uh, just watch out for those Cyclopses. You see I take the time to always snipe them. Definitely worth doing. You'll notice here that I'm shooting a node and it's not working. That was because I didn't pick up the buff. So I had to kill another Minotaur just to get the buff again, which enabled me to shoot the node. you also notice that the buff timer will refresh by like 3 to 4 seconds every time you shoot a node. This is so you can basically shoot more of them in an order, and this mechanic will be important later down the road when you got to shoot a lot more, and you don't have to go pick up the buff every time. So in general, as long as you keep shooting the nodes, you don't have to keep picking up the buff if you're fast enough. You can just pick up the buff once and then make your way to all the starter points and shoot the nodes in order. Then uh, if you're lucky enough you have someone add clearing and you should finish the first encounter pretty quickly. You'll see in most of this run I'll be solo. I will pull in a couple of fire team members at the end. This was because I was trying to solo flawless this dungeon. Um, if you stay to the end of the video you'll see what happened to those runs. Uh, spoilers. I did not flawless this dungeon, however I did solo it. It is not that easy to flawless this one, but I know it is possible and I know I definitely can do it in the future, but not right now. Maybe I'll try again in a few weeks. But yeah, here we're finishing off the last node now. So once you finish all the nodes, these big doors will open and you simply drop down. 
And if you are running this uh, dungeon with your friends, I would recommend checking out the triumphs page. You will see like to do the f run with everyone using the void, everyone using solar, everyone using arc. And some other challenges in there, there will be some collectibles along the way as well. Um, I definitely would just recommend doing a run first so you get used to the dungeon, then doing a second run to get all the collectibles and triumphs to try and get that exotic uh, weapon to drop. The exotic weapon from this dungeon is actually really nice. It's a bow that basically adds like tracking arrows to it. And if you get the catalyst from doing it on master difficulty, it can really make that thing really strong. Although I've yet to do the catalyst, I have unlocked it. This is the first traversal section, so I highly recommend an ego toward, but it's not necessary, just to help you out. But yeah, the more the challenges do, the higher exotic chance will be, so definitely check those out. And let's be honest, we all know why you're running this dungeon. You want to be a cowboy. Who doesn't? But unfortunately, because Bungie are the way they are, they made sure the cowboy hat is the rarest item to get in this run. Maybe even rarer than the exotic, because I've got the exotic more times than that cowboy hat. But yeah, definitely uh, definitely worth running a few times. I'll try and mention it when we get to a point where the cowboy hat will drop. So if it is on the rotator, then you can farm it and try and get the drops you want. Here you'll see me try and kill these enemies around here for this traversal section. Uh, it's definitely worth shooting them or killing them, especially the Hydras, because they will shoot you in the middle of your jumps and often knock your jump jumping course off. So definitely worth killing them, to be honest. But you can definitely run through here without killing a single ad. But as I said, on this run, I'm trying to have solo flawless it, so I'm trying to take my time, kill the ads, so I don't have to keep playing again and again. For that jump, you don't need an Eager Edge sword, but I did really find it difficult when I was on my Hunter, and it, it was a big help. But yeah, it's not it's not strictly necessary to do it. But for me, it was way more useful to just have that sword and just just swipe most of my way there and just hop the rest of the way. Yeah, I died, I think, 10 times on my first run trying to do that jump. In the end, my friend ended up having to pull me through because he just got bored of waiting for me, which is completely understandable, to be fair. <laughs> um, yeah, there's another one of those Hydras. She should still have a sniper equipped from the first uh, run. This is where, like, maybe you might want to change to a long-range primary weapon, but it's really up to you. You can use anything here, just the ads are a lot further away. Here you'll see, like, I'm going towards a chest. You'll see a collectible. Uh, those collectibles are worth getting for an increased exotic drop chance. But I would recommend running this through once, then do the second run to get the collectibles and complete any challenges, like I stated earlier. And we just gotta jump over this ledge and then jump round that corner at the end. You may have been able to see the, the platform sticking out there. And that will be your first chest. I believe this chest will only contain stuff that you've already got from this dungeon. So you might not get any rewards the first time. But I'm not 100% sure. Let me just go back the way we came and we jump across here and jump across this bridge. Right around this corner is a big jump. You've got to be careful though. There is a Hydra who will spawn right here. And he will ruin my day right there. So I came back and killed him. Making sure he wouldn't cause problems for me and anyone else in the future. So hopefully he won't be there when you're doing your run. Now we're going up this very long lift. It's very important here to take a second to appreciate the floor. You don't see that many high quality wood textures nowadays. And that is a high quality wood texture. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm running out of stuff to talk about because that transversal section was so long. Especially if you kept dying to silly mistakes like you'll see at the end. But at least it's over now, we're through to the next section. For this next section I'll recommend any kind of trace rifles. They will make it really a lot easier for shooting the nodes. And then we're just going to go outside, do this jump to the side, and we're going to get ready to start our next section. So in this next section, uh, just jump up here. We're going to try and go around to the left, and you're essentially doing the same mechanic that you just did. You're going to start by killing a Minotaur. He should spawn if you walk around to the left side here. He should spawn over here on the first level. You just kill him, pick up the buff, and you're going to be shooting the nodes again. You can see just above here, both the nodes are visible for the start. If you are in a fire team, you would well, again want to have two people shooting the nodes and the last person to clear the ads. Again, we're just following the wires as well. You'll find that um, on every floor, you're going to have two nodes to be shooting and two circuits to complete. 
So if you do have a third player, really all they need to do is just kill the adds, otherwise there's nothing else for them to do. They can also help finish the circuits if needed as well. Normally if I'm running with someone else, I would have either them or me just try and sh like after they finish their side, they will start to work backwards from the other side because that can just complete the circuit a lot faster and save a lot of time. Uh, you really got to be careful with these lower sections, especially with these hydras around the edges. They can really like start to mess you up. The longer they're left loose on the world, the more they can mess you up. So yeah, definitely it's worth taking a second to kill those guys. The Minotaur is here if you need to pick up the buff again. Hopefully you shouldn't need to. You should just be able to continue shooting the nodes because remember, every time you shoot a node, the buff refreshes by like four, three to four seconds. And if you're extremely quick, you won't even need to pick it up when you get to the next floor. Do a tough of those guys, always kill them. That node's always a little bit tricky down there, it's always hiding underneath the platform. It's quite a hard one to see and shoot. So yeah, just be just be mindful of that. If you are solo, make sure you take the time to kill the adds. Don't worry too much about losing the buff, you can always go pick it up again. It's better to have survivability over everything else. Probably Banner of All Titan is very nice for this because you can just grab her around and also just smack everything and it will die. Um, and you get your health back, but we'll see how long before that gets now. Here I kill a Minotaur because I lost my buff, so I go back and kill a Minotaur. Um, just so I can continue the first circuit. And as I finish, a, a elevator will open up, which will take you to the next floor. And it's exactly the same thing again. If you're quick enough, you should still have the buff. I'm quite slow on this run because I'm trying to take the time to show you where the nodes are. And very much trying not to die and kill the adds. You don't need to take time for the ads if you don't want to, and careful not to kill yourself with your own gun like I always did. On the right here you can get another buff. Watch out for these electrical fences, their hitbox is like across the whole map. Don't even bother trying to walk through there, just go straight around it, you can jump around it. I never trust going through those things. Their hitbox is not at all what it should be, it's, it's much much larger. On this node just make sure you jump on the back platform over here. Uh, it's way easier than shooting it from the side like I was looking to do. And yeah, watch out for the hydras that spawned in there as well. As you see, uh, jumping around and that's where the exit is. So we're just working back to complete the second circuit now. If you are interested in more guides, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm just starting out, so any subscriber is appreciated. I'll happily take anyone through here if they want. I don't mind like doing some kind of carries or guides so you can learn yourself while doing the dungeon. If you're interested, you can also join my clan, the link should be in the description if I've done everything correctly. Also, that's actually the only triumphs I still need to do, is to complete this dungeon and duality with clan members, and then I'll get the triumph for those. And yeah, if you did enjoy the video, just make sure you hit the like button. It took me a long time to make this one. I definitely learned a lot of stuff while doing this guide, and how to improve my guides for future. To make them a bit more streamlined. Yeah, you see me in the background just messing up the, the order for a little bit there. I know a lot of people maybe don't like this dungeon so much because the mechanic's so simple, but I think that's that's what makes it good, like because it has a nice simple mechanic, but it's like also a fun kind of fun mechanic, at least for me. And um, maybe other people find it a bit boring. But I, I actually really enjoyed this dungeon. And I went into this dungeon completely blind on my first run. Like, I had no idea what to expect, I just knew that it was like, you know, Aspire and it was like Rasputin -y themed, Warmind themed, and that you could get cowboy hats. And then when I went into this dungeon blind, and you know, I saw, uh, we figured out, the, me and my friend, we fin figured out the mechanics ourselves. Um, you know, at first it was you know, very easy to figure out these mechanics, just following the wires and learning the locations is the difficult part. Here I just get like, really disorientated, I don't know why. Um, that's why it's always important to make sure you're following the wires, uh, just reacquiring the buff there. You do got to be careful on this last section because it's very easy to fall off. There's a lot of ones up high and a lot of nodes up down low as well. Um, but there's normally like always a good place to stand where you can shoot the node while staying safe at the same time. If I'm being completely honest, I should have probably re-recorded this very last section. Um, because I'm just like really badly messing up this order. I do get there, but it takes me a while. I would say on the first time I ever did this encounter, I fell off this like top section a couple of times. So yeah, just be careful, you're making sure you're jumping in the right places. It's very easy to get bounced off the edge here and it'll get bumped off the edge as well. So yeah, just be aware of that one. Uh, here I'm just like looking for where the Minotaur is because I lost my buff and I'm trying to find him. 
As you saw, I, I kill the Hydra and that actually spawns the Minotaur, so often you'll find when you're killing ads that will spawn the Minotaur. I don't know why I never mentioned this so far, but actually if you do die with the buff, you lose the buff, which kind of makes sense. So it's most prevalent in the final encounter, because it's quite easy to die in the final encounter, so you'll often find yourself having to require the buff if you're not too careful. But we'll get to that point later. Here I decided to take some incredibly accurate shots at this Hydra and decided it's not worth my time if I just carry on and shoot two more nodes. In terms of the rewards for this section, you can actually get the Kaiwai hat from this section. If you find that easier to farm than the final boss, then maybe that's a good idea. Um, for me, it doesn't matter. I just like to run the whole dungeon through and see if I get it. I don't really like to just say and farm one encounter. I'd rather just like run it through like every week or something. Or run through all the encounters to try and get all the loot. So you're just going to head above where the chest is here. And we're going to sort of go towards our first boss encounter for the run. We're just going to jump up here. In this dungeon, there's a lot of vertical to jump in because you're basically ascending to the top of the spire. And then you're going all the way down to the bottom of the spire. Which is quite interesting as you're going up. You do have to look for one switch in this room which is open the window. Just up here you have one on either side so it actually doesn't matter which side you go on. I would say it's better going on this back side because otherwise you'll be next to the boss. And when you come out you don't want to accidentally start the encounter. But normally you have to shoot the Minotaur first to start the encounter. You'll see what I mean about that in a second. Also on this side you have the rally flag so it's just better in general. But there you see the, the, the boss in the Minotaur. Definitely he is a copy and paste boss. For a few weapons I'd recommend for this encounter, depends on what you have. Aegis Scepter is really strong with a horde. Izigagi's Burden, Session or any decent sniper, any trace rifle. Whisper of the Worm is actually really good. Sleeper Stimulant is probably quite good. Any kind of linear fusion rifle and a semi-decent ad clear weapon of your choice. Though I would say for the ad clear weapon, you might just want to use a tra your trace rifle for that and try not to kill too many adds to conserve your ammo for the boss fight. But only if you're running with two other people on your fire team, otherwise I would recommend definitely a good ad clear weapon. So again, for this encounter, you have to kill the Minotaur to pick up the buff. There's one that spawns in either side there. And then you're going to shoot the nodes in order. Surprise, surprise. So again, the exact same mechanic that we've been doing already. There'll be four total nodes, so if you're with the fire team of three, it's really good to have every single person shoot the, the nodes, like we'll take one line each and then you all meet up on the last line to you kill the ads in the last one, sort of clear up the node. And yeah, when you, when you get to the end, after you shoot all these nodes, you'll activate one of these fuel rods and yeah, as I said, you need to activate all four of those. Uh, when you're solo, this just takes ages to get to damage phase and you really got to be careful of the harpies flying around they will mess you up and the boss as well will be shooting you while you're doing this which doesn't help any kind of good survivability loadouts you have are, are, are great um but yeah again like in terms of mechanic wise it's it's really pretty much exactly the same as what you've been doing the only additional be mechanic will be when it comes to damaging the boss which we'll get to in a minute see how many harpies are flying around me right now if you're solo you have to kill these ads I found like if you if I tried leaving them alive I would just get torn apart when it came to damage phase especially the boss moves so it's not not really easy to well so I don't even recommend well warlock so much for this one but you might be better off with that um, I forget the name of it but that that arc super where you just shoot the big laser um, chaos reach there you go okay Cha chaos reach I think it's chaos reach unless that, that might be the melee attack I don't know I'm a warlock main I should know but all I've done is well. Yeah, in this I'm just using Nova Bomb because I, I'm mainly for my grenades to give me that health regen. Here you see me shooting the last fuel rod now. I'll slow down the clip a bit now. So I put a little healing down just to just to help me out in case there are any ads around. The boss won't be doing damage to you, but ads will. He's gonna move and he's gonna have these little red fins to shoot. Trace rifle is really great for killing these or heavy machine gun, but I, you know I recommend using your heavy with a DPS. When solo I found I didn't really have an ammo problem, when you're playing with multiple people I found like it was really hard to get ammo, but maybe that was just because we were running as fast as we can. And that's it, you really got to do as much damage as possible. The faster you shoot the red dots, the longer your damage phase will be. And you want to try and move forward with the boss, but you got to watch out because there is holes in the middle of the platform, so you kind of got to walk along the edge of the platform, otherwise you'll just fall in the hole. And then at the end you got to be careful, try and stand in the center area, 
because he'll blast you back. So we'll do that one more time just to show you what it looks like again. So you're shooting the red dots on him. The faster you do it, the longer your damage phase is going to be. Use your Aegis Scepter, use your Linear Fusion Rifles, your Whisper of the Worm. Uh, I'm curious to try three people with Whisper of the Worm, but it seemed really strong when I was trying it solo. And yeah, just take him down. And after the damage phase, it is literally just repeat the same mechanic again. So I'm not going to show like a second one of doing that. It's a really simple boss boss fight. Just yeah. After the damage phase, shoot the nodes again, then you you do the, the second damage phase. That is it. So now we're going to start to traverse downwards um, into this next section. This section is when you're going to encounter the second mechanic of this dungeon. Uh, you can use any any weapon of your, any ad clear weapon of your choice really, doesn't matter. First you've got to clear out the first wave of the enemies that spawn in here. You might see around the room you see some red cables instead of some yellow ones. The only difference is between the red ones and the yellow ones. The red ones you gotta shoot five of them in quick succession. Whereas the yellow ones you gotta shoot them in the order. But the red ones you just gotta shoot all five quickly. Um, if you take too long, it'll you'll have to wait and you'll have to do it again. But again, it is still a very forgiving mechanic. So you saw the mines all spawned over there, so I'm gonna pick up the buff and start shooting them. Um, I always recommend standing on the opposite side to where the mines will spawn, then you have the most visibility of where to shoot these nodes. So yeah, you'll see me just pick up the buff here, and then I'll be looking up towards uh, this side of the room. And all the nodes are on that side of the room in this first encounter. But yeah, in the other rooms it's better to be on the opposite side of the minotaur. And then the bottom of the floor will open up, and you really got to be careful with these fans. Because they have killed me more times than I like to admit. Especially when you have a fire team, you get someone jump on your head, they just get flung into a fan. It's a, a, hilarious, but also sucks because you can't revive them. And you do have like a 40 second respawn timer in this encounter. So yeah, just, just be aware of that one. Um, again, there's going to be three levels of this. It's exactly the same as first level, you kill all the adds. Uh, the mines all spawn on this ledge that I'm standing. I, I am purposely ignoring him in this clip. Just because I, I want to kill all the other ads first so I don't have to worry about them and I can just focus on shooting the nodes. I fall down here which isn't ideal but if you do fall down it's not the end of the world but you do generally want to stay on the top level of this. Witherhold's quite nice for this section as well to be fair. But it really doesn't matter what you use at all to be honest. So you see me, you see me killing him here and I go and stand on the opposite side to where I killed him. And it gives me a really great visibility of the nodes. So you have one there, one at the top. Uh, one on the left, two on the left, sorry. Make sure you shoot it very accurately, and then one on the de bottom right. Then we drop down again, and we have some more fans. Exactly the same as before, but it does give a nice like introduction to the shooting the red wire mechanic. Just take care on these fans. Um, they do very easily fling you off. You may have seen the little cut there. That was because I got killed by that fan, which was very sad. Alright, anyway, you drop down into this room. Watch out for the electrical fin that has the hitbox of like one mile you don't, don't try to avoid going through the middle section if you can uh, there will be a hydra that spawns here after you start killing some of the adds you can see him in the background just being a general pain in the ass it's not that hard to deal with him just try and make sure you do deal with him because he will just cause a lot of problems for you later uh, there is quite a lot of adds that spawn in this room but again you'll see you'll get a minus or spawn on your second wave of adds and you basically just want to kill all these adds, this hydra as well uh, as much as you can, try and leave the minotaurs alive to the very last and then you can take them out. This just makes it like way easier to, to only focus on the nodes and not deal with the adds. Again if you are running with a fire team you can have one person just kill the adds and then you just pick up the buff yourself and you go and shoot the nodes. So I just recommend like having two people do it and then the last person sort of focus on the adds if they can. So you're just shooting these nodes in the corners of the room, uh, shoot that one. There's one over here, there you go. And I was a bit slow here so that middle one shot so I always recommend you start with this middle one and then do the ones on the outside. That middle one is mainly the reason why you want to call the Hydra as well. But yeah, just I recommend always start with the middle and then do the ones around the outside, it's a lot better for you. Now we will be able to get our second chest of the run, it's going to be under these stairs here, under this vent, there is a vent under every single stairs in the room, it all looks the same so just keep shooting them if you're not sure where it is, you keep shooting them until you find the right one for you. Uh, the chest will spawn a weapon that you should have already got in this dungeon, I hope so anyway. You can go down in two different places in this, uh, there's a hole on either side of the room. And then you've got to drop down one more time and that will take you to the final boss fight. 
So this boss fight can be a little bit tricky. The hardest part is survivability. Um, once you got that down, you just gotta keep moving around. For the loadouts, I recommend Wither Horde, Aegis Scepters again was pretty good, Edge Transit was really good, Galahorn with the Apex or some kind of equipment rocket launch was decent, Grand Overture is actually really good and I've seen some people even use the Lord as well. You see in the middle of the room you have the red wires and the outside of the room you have the yellow wires. You're gonna start with the red wires so there'll be a Hydra on either side of the room, you just gotta kill that one. Uh, you just gotta constantly stay on your toes here, you'll see I have a couple other Guardians in here because you know, I already failed flawless at this point, I just wanted to get this done. Um, but I will show you a solo run at the end. Uh, yeah, so you kill the Hydra on either side of the room. Just make sure you're jumping around a lot. You'll always go into where the boss isn't, especially when solo. And you'll be fine. Um, after you kill those two Hydras, the Minotaurs will spawn here. And again, on the other side of the room in the exact same spot. Kill the Minotaur to pick up that lovely buff that we've been getting the whole game. Then you've got to shoot these nodes in the middle. Yeah, again, you've got to shoot these ones quickly. After that, you have to do a yellow circuit. The yellow circuits will spawn on either side of the room. It could be two on one side, or one on each side. Just got to be careful, because the boss will come to wherever you currently are. If there's multiple people in the fire team, it will just come to whoever. Yeah, I do complete the first one. Make sure when you complete the second one, it's very important the boss is in this room, or about to enter this room. Your whole fire team does need to try and group up in that room. Uh, you see the guys over here, they're struggling a bit to shoot the correct node, uh, the RLFG, you can't blame them. They did get it in the end, there was one where it didn't quite show in the clip there, but it, it was just up, up above there. Then you follow the, the yellow circus round, you see the whole fire team is in this room, so then the boss will slowly make his way, you can see him in a doorway. He will now start to slowly make his way into this room, and then you can shoot that final node. It's very important to wait before shooting that final node until the boss is in the room, otherwise you will just miss out on your damage phase, you have to do it from the beginning again. After shooting that final node, you've got to run back into this room, and you've got to shoot these red wires again. And if you don't do this, again, you'll fail the damage phase, you won't trap the boss in the other room, so you won't be able to damage him. Also got to make sure your whole fire team is in this room. You see over there, this guy, he just, he didn't know he was supposed to come into this room, so he just get it, gets instant wiped. Um, this is the time for damage phase, so we didn't have time to go up and res him, unfortunately. Otherwise, we probably would have got a lot more damage in here. So yeah, just use, use the, any of the loadouts I was suggesting. Um, I'm not really effectively doing my bait and switch here, so the damage is kind of poor. But yeah, just try and try your best. I'll unload as much damage as possible. Normally, the boss just charges forward at you. Um, I'm not sure what the other guy was doing, it looks like he was using Dragon's Breath to stop the boss from rushing you. Compared to the opposite of the other boss, you would got to walk backwards instead of forwards, so you're walking away from the boss if you can. Well, Warlock is quite useful for this section, which is make sure you don't pop your well too far forward or you'll just end up blowing yourself up on the rocket. Now I'll just show you in the background like the other yellow wire lines if I can. But basically after that damage phase, you've got to start from the very beginning. So you start by shooting the red wires, then you move to the yellow wires and wait until the boss is in the room and then you shoot that last node. Basically, I'm just gonna try my best to show you that in the background here. Sometimes they can be really tricky to follow the wires in this room because you do have these supplicants coming and exploding. And if the boss is in this room as you're trying to finish this, he'll really like end your day. He'll, he'll constantly be shooting you. He'll kill you so fast if you're not careful. So you just constantly got to be moving. If you're solo in it, what you can do if you see the boss has walked into that room, you can run back into the previous room to get the boss to follow you there. Um, the same with on around the sides as well. And here you'll just see me f finishing up my solo run. I was using the burning more here. This is really good super for this boss, I felt. Like, I just get so much extra damage from that one super. And I'd normally regenerate every single one. So if you like the video, feel free to subscribe. I do plan to make more guides and dungeons in the future. As I said, if you are interested in being taken through them, then feel free to join our clan. Thank you so much for watching, and feel free to enjoy the bloopers at the end for my failed flawless attempts.